back, everyone, to this week's episode of Book of the Territory, the Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast, where today we're talking NWA Saturday Night on TBS from September the 30th, 1989. It's a new month. We made it through January. It is now February of 2021. I don't know if that means if things are getting better or worse, but it is what it is. I'm sitting here with Doc and Hardbody Hopper. Uh, we've got a non-wrestling story we will share shortly, but before we do that, let me ask Doc how he's doing today, if he's living a dream or what. Well, if you're saying it's early February, man, I got to figure out something for Valentine's Day. Yeah. I asked my girlfriend, I was like, so look, because remember fucking up what y'all told me, like, man, look, you know, <laughs> they still take this shit serious. I said, so we're sitting there playing fucking Call of Duty. I said, look, how serious are you with the Valentine's Day? Like, is this something that you really want to do or... I guess, you know, we can we can go get something to eat or something. Go out to eat. I'm like, fuck. All right. So we gotta go out to eat on fucking Valentine's Day now. I got two words for you. Olive Garden. Super spreader. Yeah. At right. dinner and after dinner. I just don't uh I'm just so Mike, when's the last time you sat down and had a meal in a restaurant? Okay, let me clarify. Actually, sit down in a restaurant and have a meal. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was before the pandemic. I have been oh, to really? a restaurant to get takeout. Oh, yeah. Um, we do that a lot. Support numerous local, times. I'm yeah, here that, to support like, the local, man. That's right. They've, there's some local establishments that we go to fairly frequently because they're small businesses, and I believe in helping out small businesses. Uh, as we are possible. a small business. We'd be hypocrites if we didn't. Yeah. Right. So there's a, there's a few different places in the area we go to and we, we get takeout and I try to support them. But yes, I have not actually sat in a restaurant. Look, my, my mother-in-law's doctor was like, y'all need not bring this home to this woman. So y'all be careful. Okay. We got I the same thing. And, and, and once I yeah. saw the map of how the air circulates in a restaurant, I'm not sure I'm ever going back. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> they got an Italian restaurant called Vincent's. It's like right down the street. It's like a, it's like the biggest Italian restaurant in fucking New Orleans, pretty much. And she's like, we don't go anywhere. We don't go. Uh, we don't. We just sit around the house. And I said, so, right, so, what the fuck you want to do? And she's like, let's go out to eat. I'm like, fuck, okay. So we go to Vincent's, bruh. It looked like the fucking Royal Rumble match. In this goddamn restaurant. I'm like, thank God I already got this shit in fucking December. Better watch I, out. You don't know how long you, you don't know how long your immunity lasts, though. You might get it again. I mean, I don't know. It's been I mean, this time you only lost month. your sense of smell. This time your dick might fall off or something. Oh shit. Is that true, Mike? I mean you have a associate's degree. I have a bachelor's, but I'm not a doctor like this guy, so <laughs> I think you should uh, think you should listen to the doctor here. I do think I'm going to sidestep a lot of this activity this year, though. I'll have to report back in a couple of weeks and see if I live to tell the tale. But this, if we've ever had a chance to, to use a pandemic to our advantage, this is it. Fuck, you ain't lying, bro. Bro, no, I don't even want to hear it because you know what? Like, they want what they want, and they don't give a shit. That's any, right, God any, damn it. Any other sources of input or data. Don't get me started. I'll get in trouble. You get in trouble when you bring in logic, because that Dude, never entered into right. their calculations. Don't get me started. You want to hear something funny? Okay, uh -oh. let's hear it. <laughs> so Saturday, we're sitting on a sofa, and she's like, yeah, you know, we just, just, the other Taker, he was on Joe Rogan's podcast. I said, "Yeah, he was on there to uh, promote the big fight tonight." And she was like, "What big fight? The one with him and Conor and Br <laughs> Undertaker versus Conor McGregor?" She's like, "What?" It's like, "Yeah, the Undertaker is taking on Conor McGregor tonight." She's like, "No way!" It's like, "Yes, he is in a casket match." It's uh, Conor McGregor versus the fucking Undertaker. And then she goes to work and she's like, yeah, brother, we got that big fight tonight with the Undertaker versus Conor McGregor. And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? 
<laughs> he starts fighting the fucking Undertaker. She's like, yeah, it's a casket match. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And so the next time she sees me, she's like, you know, you're a fucking asshole. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh. Mike, this is why that joke might not work. Would Sasha know who Conor McGregor is? What do you mean might not work? Would Sasha know who Conor McGregor is? Uh, she might. Yeah. She definitely wouldn't know who the Undertaker is, so it wouldn't work with her. But I think it's funny. What makes that better is the she works at a bar, so she's Hopper's girl is going to a bar where like patrons there definitely know, you know, because they go to bars to watch right. sports and. So, like, they're looking at her like she just fell out of a goddamn tree. <laughs> like, what are she you talking with, about? She is with Harper. I mean. That's right. Um, Speaking, speaking of that, Joe, I listened to that. It, it took me about three <laughs> exercise sessions to get through it. Man, a lot of people are up in arms over nothing he said. Bruh, I mean, what did he say that wasn't true? He didn't say anything like he made a statement about he's like, yeah, the guys nowadays they, they play their video games and they're yeah, on they're trying to make and... it sound like it was like the shit Cornette says. Dude, he was mild. Like he didn't even he didn't call anybody out by name. He's like, yeah, the guys nowadays, you know, they play their video games and you know, it's just a lot different, you know, and you know what I mean? And uh it's just different. I mean, everyone you know I mean? says that in sports. If you ask yeah. fucking, fucking Jim McMahon about football from when he played to now, I mean, what the fuck you think he's gonna say? He's got CTE. He don't remember shit. Well, no, well, I, I just like I, I, I was, I was, I read an article online. I heard social media was real crazy with it, but I read an article online about it, and I was like, so I went and I eventually listened to it. I, I still don't know. I don't know if I missed something because it was a long podcast, but I don't know what he said that was so offensive. I mean, he just was like, yeah, we used to drink and we'd do crazy stuff. And he wasn't, uh, he thing, was just bro. presenting facts. He was presenting facts. We were crazy, wild and crazy back then is what he kept saying. Everybody's looking for a reason to be offended. We've done litigated this and talked about it. That's true. You know what? He didn't say At anything. Under, most likely, not everything. Cause he might, you never know. I mean, Joe Paterno, but if The Undertaker says something about wrestling, he's probably close to right. I would he, say he, so. He told, he's not he my told, favorite character ever. I have a lot of respect for him, a lot of respect for everything, his body of work. But if he says it, it's probably true. Come on. He told he told this he told this story. Um, you know, Buzz Sawyer was the one who who he first paid to train him. And Buzz bolted and got out of town on him and didn't, you know, he, he just disappeared. So anyway, Undertaker was telling this story about like one time uh, he when, when I guess he was he was in WCW at the time. I'm not 100 percent sure. But uh, Buzz was like getting messed up. He was all messed up and peeled up in a Waffle House. And Buzz said he, he was he could see him from like his hotel room. He's like, man, after he took my two grand, I thought about going out there and just, you know, doing something <laughs> harmful to him. But uh, he's like. I didn't do it. It's probably good that I didn't, because Lord knows I may have gotten caught and something bad would happen to me. But he's he 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 said he uh, he said he almost did it. He also told the story about they were in a locker room. I guess it was in WCW, and uh, he didn't specify. And he said he was staring at Buzz, and Buzz was like, "What the hell are you staring at?" He's like, "You don't know who the hell I am, dude, do you?" And this is at the time when when he's still like just trying to make a name for himself. And you know, he's not Undertaker yet. He's he's mean Mark, and um. He's like, you know, they, they kind of, I don't know if they got nose and nose or anything, but they, they had a few words and, and like Buzz was like, you're going to do something, just do it. He's like, nah, man, I ain't going to do nothing. I'm just letting you know, I know who you are, you know? And that was it. But Buzz Sawyer treated that dude horrible, man. He, it, it's, a, imagine, it's a, but imagine, imagine Buzz Sawyer, Gary Hart, you name it in the WWE today. Oh dear God. I mean, it wouldn't last Buzz, there you especially go. if it would last a half an hour. But yeah, somebody, not... but somebody else wouldn't last either. It messed somebody up on the way out. Um, he, it's a, um, it took me, it took me three, three, uh, three running sessions to get through it. But yeah, it I was. I can't stand uh, the other guy, the little Mark dude. Oh God, he's yeah. Don't you get just just ignore what he says because he uh, doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. The yeah. the the yeah, it's it's one of Rogan's like comedic friends or comedy friends and he's like a big undertaker mark and 
Yeah, he he was oh god, that dude was he doesn't know wrestling history. I mean, he started talking about the attitude era and how great that was and and don't get me wrong, I mean, we we all respect Austin and uh, Doc for all his hatred for WWF will tell you, bruh, Austin was set the hook with him and he was all in with that, but that's the only thing he's ever been into related to WWF. So, but that guy was just marking out about how that was the greatest thing ever. And I was sitting there while he was saying that I was thinking about all of our discussions about 85, 86 Crockett and, you know, mid South and world-class going, dude, if you think the, if you think that era was the greatest, you just don't know. I'm not even going to say you're dumb. It's not that you're dumb. You just don't know. You're too young to know. So yeah, he was a Harper. He, how bad was he marking out? Yeah, dude. He, I can't stand that dude. Because I remember when they had Jake the Snake on there about two years ago or so, he was on there doing the same thing. Yeah. Anyway, it, it's worth listening to, but that's neither here nor there for right now. Hey, I just want to give a special shout out to our largest page contributors monthly, disrespectfully classy, Marky Blassie, Jeremy Priest, Mike Childry, Joe Ice. Thank you for your patronage each and every month. Okay, Doc, you've got something for Harper, right? I don't know how to introduce this. I don't know how to cover this. I I think I know how to respond to it, and that's with utter shock and disgust. I'm hoping Mike has pulled up the article as the straight man here on this thing. Um, but before we get a, a, a full-on explanation of what has happened, I always think that we, we benefit from getting Harper's take on it. So, in your opinion, Harper, how would you sum up this story that you've brought to us? Uh, shocking. Okay, but what, you know, have you heard the one about the, and then you fill in the blanks. Have you heard the one about the guy that was banging the horses in City Park? (laughs) This is not satire, everyone. I mean, I know those two are chuckling like Beavis and Butthead. (laughs) But this is a real thing. Um, in, uh, yeah, in, my in, wife was like, so what are y'all going to talk about tonight? And I, I said, Google New Orleans horse stables. And she just looked at me and went, what the fuck? <laughs> the, the title of the website article says, Police Identify Person of Interest Accused of Horse Sex at City Park. For everyone out there, not from the uh, South Louisiana or New Orleans area, City Park is our, you know, City Park in New Orleans. And it's in the middle Harper, of the city. Where were horse you when this happened? Well, I, I mean, it's happening. Take it, you, no, the answer is you were taking your girl out to eat. Come on. That's nice. Oh, yeah, that's true, huh? <laughs> I couldn't have been there. We were at Vincent's. Yeah. <laughs> So let me let me read let me read just a snippet real quick. New Orleans police believe they have found a person of interest in a case involving a man having sex with at least two horses at City Park in December. Police say uh, Kashawn Baker, 23, could be connected to a crime caught on video during an investigation into sexual abuse of animals on December 15th in the 1000 block of Fillmore Avenue. Around 2.15 right, so a.m. Whoa, 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 let me throw in a big word here. I, I'm going to help the Times pick a you now. Allegedly. <laughs> Because if they're wrong about that, <laughs> there's going to have to be a major retraction. So, um, good point, good point. Um, around 2.15 a.m., uh, a.m., an unknown male wearing a striped shirt with a distinctive tattoo on his right arm entered a cluster of stables and committed unnatural sex acts with two horses. On Wednesday, detectives received a DNA hit for the person of interest and secured a B-U-C-C-A-L swab warrant for him. Yeah. <laughs> How do you get that out the horse? Well, maybe <laughs> the, back, the the small of its back. The first thing I thought was, how tall is this motherfucker? <laughs> maybe he had a step stool. I mean, I mean, does he play for the Pelicans? I mean, who who's fucking who's tall enough to fuck a horse? And I'm thinking. Oh, I mean, wouldn't it be funny if, like, nine months later, the horse is pregnant and it gives birth to a fucking centaur? That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with us? Is that where the centaurs come from? If that happens, y'all need to start training them down at Wildcat. <laughs> <laughs> That's an attraction. Yeah, Luke, you could be a millionaire with that one, Hopper. Um, so are we sure that he was giving? 
that's what I was that's what I was wondering because uh, I mean if you're sick enough to do this yeah also I'm not so sure the horse would just stand there and let you unless right. you know, bought him a few drinks and took yeah. him to <laughs> took him to Vincent you didn't see any horses at Vincent's did you no. I mean I think a horse would need some whining and dining before you yeah some some fucking Jaeger bombs <laughs> Give the horse some fantasy. Uh, oh. So, Mike, you always ask why I drink. It's because of shit like this. There's some sick shit in the world, man. I, I ain't gonna lie, dude. I was surprised it was a black dude. I kind of <laughs> was too. Yeah. This is not like your people, Mike. Right. This is more of a harborized thing. <laughs> We usually claim this kind of stupidity. Uh, I mean, in all seriousness, what kind of drugs is this dude on? Mm, I don't, the good shit. Well, he's, he's, on too many, he's on too many drugs. He might not have been able to produce that DNA sample. That's fucking gross. The thing is, <laughs> how gross. they found out is they got surveillance cameras. See, okay, first... The horse that he was fucking, here's the thing, the, the, the fucking Orleans Parish Sheriff's Office, they keep their horses there. The ones they use for Mardi Gras and, and fucking crowd control. Right, so, I did, yes. So Officer there's cameras Harris. in there. <laughs> Officer but, Harris's horse is going to be walking with a limb. Wait, actually, so, so actually it's he's right. So theology and assault on a police officer. <laughs> right, right. So the, the horse... The horse was owned by the Orleans Parish <laughs> Police Department Sheriff. <laughs> it's like his horse. So right. not only did he bang a horse or do un- Which is do a felony, sex- first of all, right there. Right. Yes. You can't just <laughs> molest an animal. But he molested a sheriff type animal. <laughs> this this is an officer. He molested. Right. What if it's the horse has double- to go to therapy and it's like <laughs> got pixelated? You know, in the evidence, he's got a pixelated screen. Show us on a doll where the bad man touched you. (laughs) (laughs) And the thing is, right, so so there's surveillance cameras in there. So imagine being the motherfucker that's like. Wait, what's that? Is that is that a guy that's it? Wait. Wait, what's that guy doing? Wait, he's taking his pants off. What the fuck? Yeah, you know, one of the other guys is like, let's go shoot him. And the guy goes, oh, let's watch and see what happens. Yeah. And then he starts taking down his pants. Yeah. And they're like, Barney Fife, put your pants back on. Well, let's be fair. I don't think anybody was watching the live feed of it. Hopefully not. Hopefully no. they saw it after the it- fact. Because if you saw it live, I, I-, I would be like 911 there's a dude banging a horse in our stable and the 911 op that would be a 911 call you'd want to get a hold of like to hear that report call oh yeah that'll be freaking awesome there's uh, how surprised were you that he was a brother well hold on i I want to i want to hear harper what were you about to say we're we're talking about surveillance how did they know somebody was going in there doing this the horse was walking with the limp the next day. I guess. I mean, th- was there DNA left on the horse's back? <laughs> <laughs> like they like went there the next day to go to work, and they're like, "What the fuck is that on a? What the fuck is going on?" I think Trigger's got a. I think Trigger's got a runny nose. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with y'all? Y'all. Okay? <sighs> I don't know, Hopper. It doesn't say that that would be. I tell you one good, good goddamn thing right here, right now. It's shit like this that's going to make me stay in the house after the pandemic. Yeah, I'm banging a goddamn horse. I mean, you can't go find some little hoe bag on Tinder. I, I don't know. Can you? <laughs> I, I Yeah. <laughs> it's walking like a man that knows it's not too hard. I, I guess. I I think that um, <laughs> here's the other thing I think because this guy was what 23 years old. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, he's young. Like what do you think? Like, and maybe this is 
this is the effect. But you think when he was like three or four and somebody in his family, maybe not mama or daddy or grandmama, but somebody was proud that that little kid was born and he was going to be the one that did good things for the family. And now there's this. Yeah, and now his face on the news for banging Miss Dad. <laughs> I'd say, how do you come across this filth? But it was on the news, right? This is like this is not this is real you know, news. You know, we're yeah. out here. We're out here fighting a pandemic. We're divided as a people, and this asshole's out here banging horses. So, <laughs> if for everybody who doesn't know, when we say on the news. I mean, this is WVUE in New Orleans, which is, that's Channel 8, right, Hopper? W, I think WV, is it, uh, no, Fox is that, 8. Is that, it's, oh, that's right. It changed. That's right. WVUE, is that NBC? That's, uh, I, 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 is uh, Channel 6. Right. So is that 26? Which one is it? I, no. I forget, dude. It's been NBC so long since I lived there. 26. Okay. Well, well, my point is, this is a ma- this is this is one of your you know your major stations. This isn't some you know knockoff BS television station that's reporting this thing. So, you know, this isn't on um uh, what's you know, that? Uh, Wired dot com or some shit. Right. Th- this isn't on the Onion dot com. You know, this right. is, this is like actual news. And yeah, it says Kashawn Baker twenty three is accused of allegedly having unnatural sexual relations with at least two horses in city parks. <laughs> <laughs> at least what would what would natural be well i guess it's unnatural because it's human to to, to animal i want to go fuck okay. a pony <laughs> because he'll need a step a, a fucking step stool Jesus. i don't know if you want to recommend going find a little mini pony hopper just, just... <laughs> mini okay. ponies are mean man uh, you've yeah. spoken like somebody with experience with mini ponies. Remember that show on MTV they used to have called, uh, what was it? Um, Big and, uh, what's his name? The oh. Big, Bob and Big. Yeah, I forgot, I remember that. The skateboard that was, dude with the big yeah, black shit, guy. Yeah, that shit was funny. Big Rob was hilarious. Or Big, uh, Big was hilarious, but they bought a little, they had a little pony fellow friend. And I think it was mean, man. He died. I yeah. know. Big died. Big was an awesome dude. Yeah. He was... All right. Well, um, I, 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 I don't know how to transition away from, from that. Man, Maybe can you change. imagine being the public defender for that shit? <laughs> Bro, that's like Better Call Saul. They get, there, they get in the courtroom and they ask the public defender, and he's like, look. Boys will you want be me... boys. <laughs> he's like, what the fuck do you want me to say? Yeah. Fry this motherfucker. Yeah, like, what do you say for that? You say, look, man, want y'all young at one at one time? Come on, man. I know we've got to have some def- some attorneys out there in the army. If you're in army, if you're in the army, and you're an attorney, I need you to to email Mike and tell him how you defend a horse fucker. <laughs> um, I, we I know one for sure. He's actually more than an attorney. So, what does um, that mean? Well, uh, we've got a couple of judges, actually. Is he on stamps? Oh, uh, judges? Jeez. What? Yeah. Christ. Yeah, yeah, I know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> no, I mean, y'all know that. We've said this before. I've, I've said judges? one of Judges? Like, judge yeah. judges. Listen yeah. to us. Hey, that's yeah. good. To, that's uh, good information oh. for me to file away for later. I, I, need, I might need a judge in my back pocket at some that's point. That's crazy. Yeah, it's it's amazing, you know. It just goes to show you if you provide quality, ridiculous, <laughs> filthy entertainment, anybody will listen to you, you know. Hey, so, we do ads free shows without anybody having to pay for it. That's right. That's right. So um yeah, it I, I know for a fact we've got an attorney or two. I know we've got one judge, maybe two. So yeah, there there are some people out there. So yes, to the judges and attorneys out there. Uh, uh, what was your question, Doc? About what do you say if you're defending How this do you uh, person? Think about building a credible defense for a guy if he's caught on camera trying to inseminate a <laughs> an equine. He was trying to make a centaur. Yeah, that's your defense. <laughs> Harper's uh, Harper's public defender. Remember, when Harper shows up. He's got his sleeves ripped off his jacket. I'm Christopher, your public defender. Shut the fuck up. Here's what we're gonna do. You were trying to build a centaur. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. Well, 
Doc, anything else, or can I hit the the video recorder so we can start the NWA portion? I think we should definitely talk about some wrestling to cleanse our palates from that semen-infested discussion. Yuck. Yeah, so if you just listen, or you you just watch the video versions of these that go up on Patreon, because you're a Patreon member at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT, you really got to go listen to the first about 25 minutes of this week's show, where we talked about... A horse being molested by a young man, uh, allegedly being molested by a young man in City Park in New Orleans. Uh, We went for about 20 minutes on that discussion. So go back and listen to that if you only listen to the video version or watch the video versions of these on Patreon. All right. On that note, again, we are talking September 30th, 1989, NWA Saturday Night on TBS. Uh, the show, the opening that we have kind of gets cut off. We got Jim Ross and Cornette. They open up the show with with some teasers about the Steiners, Ric Flair and Terry Funk. So stay tuned here with all the fuss is about. This oh. episode has a go ahead. You're about to say something right there on the video. You see Corny's racket. Yes. You think he ever tickled a girl's nether regions with that with that fur? fur? Probably. Is that, all you, is that all you think about? I bet he did. Fuck, you know damn well he did. Hey, at least I keep my nonsense to females and not horses, you dickhead. Oh, that's true, too. Uh, so. Um, so, um, this episode has a lot of technical problems with the tape that we have, or yeah. <laughs> the digital version. So, if you're watching the video version, we apologize, but we have what we have, and that's how it goes. Uh, hopefully, one day, that uh, quote-unquote streaming service will put some better quality of them up, but who knows? Don't hold your breath there. But that's that. You know, we'll see what happens. Uh, Jim Ross and Cornette continue to tease a Gordon Soley announcement later in the show about Funk's situation and what's going on with Terry Funk. And then, um, yeah, that's it. We go to the ring where first match up is none other than Ric Flair, who's going to take on Gene Ligon. Uh, Jim Ross and Cornette again tease Gordon Soley's announcement throughout this match. And then JR also mentions Halloween Havoc is coming. Flair is going to win quickly with the figure four. Doc, let me throw it to you. See what you got. Well, last week you said something, and now I couldn't stop paying attention to it, is how many dates JR has given out to where they're coming. Right. Non- nonstop. He never stops. I was like, bro, just send them to the damn website. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like when I pointed it out last week, it, it was just glaring. Like I'm because you'd have these matches where not a lot was happening, so he's just plugging, plugging. But this plugging, is not plugging, one plugging, of those plugging. matches. This is Ric Flair. This is the world champ. Yeah. I this guess... is also this is also, by the way, Rick's first match that we've seen since they've gone out of the studio. Yep, sure is. I think when I was mm-hmm. a kid, WWE like on Superstars and all, they used to have it, like on the bottom of the screen, maybe. Like coming to you know you and a lakefront arena or, or I don't know maybe I'm wrong. They well, may have I don't remember specifically, but you're right. I'm still that's telling probably... you right now that if if Bon Scott from ACDC would have lived, this is what he would have looked. Like. Gene Ligon is what he would have looked like in 1989, <laughs> and he made it out with a bullet in his back. Um. Anything else from the match, Doc? Or go ahead, Hawker. You got something? Couldn't tell. This tape quality was fucking straight up garbage. It is messed up. Hawker, what you got from it? You know how the guy from ACDC died, Mike? Yeah. Take a guess, Tinkerbell. He was fucking a horse. I don't have a clue. He was fucking a horse. Yeah. He wasn't. It's Come it's on. what it's what white people do, dude. <laughs> white people are into some weird stuff, bro. And we this... smell like puppy dogs. Yeah. <laughs> I always go back to um who said it in Kings of Comedy? It was it Bernie Mac? It was like, you know he's like, you know, when it's a serial killer, nine times out of ten, it's gonna be a white person. Because you never hear a black person talking about I'm about to go fuck a bunch of people up. Like it just, you know, black that sounds people, racist to me. Yeah. Well, Bernie Mac, did, did Bernie Mac say it? I can't remember who said it in Kings of Comedy now. Hey, Mike. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Who's more dangerous in jail, the white guy or the black guy? I think it depends on what color you are. 
Let's hear your answer, Harper. The white guy, because he actually did it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Come on. God. <laughs> William Bozar just drove off the road yeah. howling. <laughs> did I see something on did I see something on Twitter where Ducky Bozard had his kids on the Thunderdome? Oh, did he? That's cool. I think I think he I think he did. I think he got him on. I think they were on there. I'm not sure, but I think so. That's good, man. Uh, Have fun. Uh, whatever. Yeah. You know, hey, hey, let me it's tell you something. Probably, hey, I'd much rather when you, you can speak to this, Mike. Wouldn't you much rather put your kids on the Thunderdome than have to take them down to the fucking arena for? Oh five my hours? God, dude! I remember when my nephew was still. I mean, he's like twenty now. But, but like when he was a kid, he was all into it. I, I used to take him to the arena and then all, and just like, fuck. Harper got so tired of taking him. He was like, you know, this shit's fake, don't you? And broke. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, now I know how my dad felt. And stuff is exponentially more expensive now when you, well, before yeah. the pandemic, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, that, that would be a, a much uh, better and cheaper option. The Thunderdome. I, I agree. Hey, look, look at the finisher. Remember yeah, a few years ago, y'all told me he never used that as a finisher. He Actually, never won with you it. said that, but we're not going to let you uh, lie to the people out there. You brought, you said that he never used it. Yeah, yeah, we remember. Okay, Doc. Any other thoughts before we go to the? Uh, next I voted point? it as the number one finisher in our top five finishers. That's great. Glad you have that memory. You remember certain things. Anything before we go to Luger? I'm going to take that as a no, because I don't hear you, Doc, if you're muted. Let's go to Lex Luger now. Okay, let's go to Lex Luger now. And we're back here, ladies and gentlemen, on World Championship Wrestling with the United States Heavyweight Champion, the total package, Lex Luger, who in recent weeks has been issuing some challenges, but they have seemingly been unanswered. You know, it's been a blatant, open challenge to any competitor in the NWA, I don't care whether they have a big reputation, new, old, or no reputation at all. The total package is stating he's the finest wrestler on the face of the earth. And if anybody out there, any of these great competitors, Jim Ross, anyway, can prove me wrong, they're welcome. There's open contract. What it comes down to is this, Jim Ross. The total package Lex Luger is now at a new level. It's been an attitude adjustment on my part. And, and combine that with the physical tools and my intelligence, I am unbeatable. Wait, 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 wait excuse me. Excuse hold, me. Hold, hold, hold. I'm not done yet, Jim Ross. What I'm saying right now is I'll go one step further. The wrestlers in the NWA are more scared of Lex Luger than they are of wanting the U.S. title, because I'm bigger than the U.S. title itself. I don't agree with that whatsoever, and I don't think the fans here do either. I think there are a lot of great young athletes that have great athletic backgrounds that would love to challenge you for this championship. That's my opinion. I don't think that many people are afraid. I think they, a lot of people want to accept the challenge. Jim Ross, first of all, when you address the U.S. champion, you show a little respect and you take the bass out of your voice. I look in a mirror every morning and what I'm saying is this. I don't see anybody who can touch Lex Luger in the sport of professional wrestling. And what it comes down to is this, Jim Ross. Until somebody comes out here and takes the challenge, I'm right. What do I have to do, Jim Ross? I guess I just have to take out a classified in the USA Today because there's nobody out here with the intestinal fortitude to make and take Lex Luger up on his challenge. All right, well, that remains to be seen. I think there are a lot of great young athletes with phenomenal athletic backgrounds that would like to challenge him. Let's go now to Rhubarb Jones. I like when he told JR, take the bass out of your voice when you address Bruh. me. That was phenomenal. Uh, Luger continues to be good. What do you think, Doc? I agree, I, man, because I even like the first part. Before he said – now, that was the line. Don't get me wrong. But before that, when he's, he cut him off and said, no, 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 you don't cut me off. I'm, I'm still talking. And then in the second time he interrupted, he said, take your bass out of your voice. I thought Luger commanded that really well for a guy that, in all honesty, is is – been deliver, delivering good promos, but is not known in the top echelon of talkers. He handled JR really, really well throughout that. To take the bass out of your voice when you're talking to me was phenomenal. The only problem with this, and it's a small one, 
is that no one in the history of fashion has ever made a bolo tie look good. Yeah, that looked bad, huh? Go back to it and get a look at it. <laughs> Harper, you Jim ever Pop. wear a bolo? You ever wear a bolo tie? Fuck no. I'm not. I've worn some fucking... stupid. I've worn some st- stupid shit in my life, but I've never worn one of those. No, dude. No. It's just. I mean, I could see if you're some straight up, you know, guy from the country, some fucking hee haw motherfucker. <laughs> But if you're Lex Luger, why the fuck are you wearing that? Your neck's too big to wear a tie, have a tie on. Yeah. Let uh, me ask you a question. I got a 20 so he, inch neck. So that's a big neck. Yeah, in nineteen big. in 1989, I said a big neck, not a d- dick. dick. Okay. Um, in 1989, a guy like Luger, he, I, I don't know much about these types of ties. So I'm going to take y'all advice on it. So a they guy were, like Luger. Like kind of wouldn't fashionable to a certain extent back then. That's it why I that, asked that. It had that young guns time and yes, you know, but he, he, he should have his, his top two buttons should be unbuttoned. Yeah. Because he has a physique and it's like, he's it's, it's yeah. He needs to show more. I think he looks great with it. I think it it adds to the sleeves factor and the the just I'm a pompous asshole. Like that's what I think it adds to. It. I don't think it makes him look like a pompous asshole. I think it makes him look like a shithead and not well, in a good too. way. Okay, fair enough. Um, any other thoughts on the on this doc? No, I don't. Don't let that take away from the fact that that, in my opinion. For the way he handled that was his best promo we've ever seen on this show. You, you, you know, you and Hopper say that every week. Oh, that's his best one yet. Y'all He's been saying better. that for like. He's trending upwards. It's yeah. like I tell my wife every every week during the football season. I tell her that this is the most important Cowboy game of the of the year. She gets all mad. She's like, "So you mean I can't? We can't do it? No, can't do anything. It's the most important game of the year." Well, it's kind of true. I mean, it all builds upon. <laughs> It never, it, I mean, from week one, it just gets more important until you're eliminated. <laughs> like, yeah, there's exactly. no other way to put it. And we wait till and, the very end to get eliminated. And, and then when you're eliminated, which like has been Saints. a number of years, it, well, <laughs> I was going to say, even if it's in a regular season, it's been a number of years since we've been eliminated in a regular season. But, you know, you're right. You, you may take it down to week 16 or 17. And now I got to see what real teams are fighting for. Yeah. All right, so, Hopper, any other thoughts on Luger before we keep going? Nah. All right. We keep it moving. Uh, Road Warrior Animal is in single action. He's uh, wrestling Tim Parker. Jim Ross teases a Road Warriors and Skyscrapers match, and he wonders how that would look, and it would it be great because it would be two powerhouse teams. Animal is going to win this thing in, like, 45 seconds' time. Doc, what would you have from this, if anything? I guess Hawk must be out on a crack binge. Yeah, I was That's wondering nice. where in the hell he was. Come on, it, dude. Is he is he upset about money or something? Or no, man, I'll never not. forget that mm-hmm. shoot interview I saw with Todd Gordon, where he said, you know, Hawk called him and said, "Look, I'm not coming to the ECW show because I bought some drugs and I'm holding up." Well, um, Hawk hasn't gone anywhere at this point. He's still around in case. Anybody speculating he's, he's well here. so if we're gonna get to the TV company aspect of this how are you gonna have a road warrior match and miss have the cameras miss animal bum rush doing the road warrior bum rush at the beginning yeah dude I was so I was like fuck you that, that was the best part I mean Shivani he's not here at the time but he says it all the time and he's got said it for years on his show like the people that they had behind the cameras just weren't always the greatest. And yeah. Right hand sometimes don't know what the left hand's doing, Doc. All it's right. par for the course with this company. I mean, you realize that at this point, right? It's just, it is what it is. It's just we, we disappointing because con- there's so much talent. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we conveniently. Not conveniently. We conveniently, when we were younger, just forgave it. But as you get older and you look back at it, you're like, God damn, they had a lot of issues. I see why this crap was losing money for a long time before we got to the Monday Night Wars. But anyway, 
Uh, let's go now to um, Hawk. I'm sorry, Animal, and he's going to cut a promo. Ladies and gentlemen, as a wrestling fan, I've often wondered what would happen if the Road Warriors wrestled the skyscrapers. That's a question right now I want to pose to Road Warrior Animal. Well, you know something, Jim Ross? When we started the NWA, we proven to everybody, step by step, climbing the ladder, and still finally now, for the last six years, we've been the top ten team in all of professional wrestling. Now, skyscrapers, you're big, you're bad, but your biggest downfall is Teddy Long, because everybody saw on national television, Teddy Long cost us the World Tag Team Championship, and we always did, Teddy Long, no matter what it takes, whatever team you get, we're going to mow you down, so Teddy, baby, and Sydney Vicious, if you think you're bad enough and you think you're ready, well then just try to step in the four corner of the two with Hawk and the animal and Precious Paul. Well, Paul, you got any closing comments here very quickly? Apparently not, ladies and gentlemen. That undefeated team, the Skyscrapers, pending meeting of the Road Warriors, will shake the rafters, and we'll be back with Gordon Soley right after this. Well, unfortunately, uh, with Paul not talking at the end of it, uh, Javorski won't be able to crank one off with his salty ass. Uh, I thought Animal, there was nothing like really pop worthy there, but, you know, he was effective. I mean, he's intense and that's the big thing. And he basically laid it out. He ain't worried about the damn skyscrapers. Um, They're the big, they're the big cheese around here. Doc, your thoughts? I thought he was good. I I couldn't, whoa, stay right there. Yeah, no. I, I couldn't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, what? It's, it, it, that, no, I'm not gonna let y'all. I, I'm not gonna let y'all make fun of the, these these young ladies. I'm talking I'm about not. the guy with in the, the middle with his arms crossed, like right. This guy's like, God damn it! <laughs> I guarantee you, he's mad because he's sitting next to a black person. Yeah, <laughs> there's the guy with the fucking ACDC shirt. Look at that, dude. They're surrounded by black folks. Those two, yeah, but those two guys look like they're leaving here to get on a plane and storm the Capitol. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, keep going. What were you about to say about Animal? They had the camera way up in his face, man. Yeah, way too close. It's like, back up, man. Let him breathe. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? Anything else? No, it was good, man. And, and hey, if we're gonna do the um, the road warriors and skyscrapers, I'm interested. Yeah, we're gonna see it. I think we might see it twice. I think about it. Right, clashes man. or pay per views. I can't remember. Uh, we're also, you know, I don't want to spoil things, but we're not too far away from, you know, a couple months away from a different version of the skyscrapers too. If what about know, Tommy Rich? What are we gonna? What's in store for him? Bruh, I was looking at a clash in 1990 last week after we recorded. Like over the weekend, I was like, just uh, let me click on this. I ain't watched this one in a while. And there's a match at I think a clash with Tommy Rich and Bam Bam Bigelow. Oh mm. shit! Well, we also that. have to have we also have to have a match at some point with Tommy Rich that ends Tommy Young's career. Tommy Rich is a moron, but anyway, okay, Doc. Any, uh, can we uh, Harper? Do you have anything from Animal? No, I want to hit yeah. play to see see what happens. You know, with this scene. <laughs> All right. So on that note, they're, they're being funny here. You you got to become a patron, tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. You get the video r- versions of these, and you'll see exactly what why, these two no, hooligans are talking know, about. I want to know why all the, the, the black ladies are having so much fun and all right. the white guys are so pissed off. Look That's at all that joy on the on these sisters' faces. And these two guys. I want to know, like, where are these people now? All dead. But nice. this no. is wrestling. But these two guys look like they just found out that the slaves were free. <laughs> <laughs> like, when the hell did this happen? <laughs> and, the, and that these four ladies are the ones that told them. They're like, Lord, Lord, Lord. They canceled Dukes of Hazard, and now this shit. 
<laughs> hold on, hold on one second. Let me let me let me scroll back a second. I want to see something and play it in live motion just to kind of see what they do because I didn't make a note of it when I was first watching this. All right, we're coming back from break now. Yeah, mama. Well, no, the oh, ACDC oh, guy, he's clapping. clapping. But the dude in between him and, and the black lady, he does not look happy. Because he got sat next to a black person. Boy, he looks upset with the world. Look at that. Yeah. Yep. Bro, yeah. he is not happy with that woman sitting next to him. I, oh man, I love my. the I love the I love the sisters, man. Come on, and the sisters love me. Just so you know, I've never heard anything further from the truth from you. But okay, all right. On that note, let's uh, let's keep moving. Uh, Doc being disrespectful. Let's go now. So here's what's happening here. Jim Ross is going to throw it to Gordon Soley. It's related to a press conference that Flair had there right after the pre- the information that we get from solely there is a rick flair promo but it gets cut off we on the copy we have we don't have it i did some research uh talked to some folks but no one had the full copy where flair cuts his promo so there's that but let's go now to gordon solely and see what he's got to say fans will have dick murdoch and dangerous dan spivey right after the college scoreboard but right now let's go to our colleague gordon solely and his report on the rick flair press conference held earlier today Thank you very much. I've just returned from the press conference called by the National Wrestling Alliance and Ric Flair, the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. As you know, of course, Terry Funk was suspended indefinitely by the NWA, and he was assessed a $100,000 fine. Well, Flair has been lobbying the NWA to let Funk back into the ring, and now he has gone so far as to pay himself the $100,000 fine. He paid it personally to the NWA. The suspension has been lifted. The fine has been paid. And now, Funk will go up against Ric Flair, who is seeking vengeance in October 8th in the Omni in Atlanta in an I Quit NWA World title match. The first time in history such a match has been signed. Following that, it will be Sting and Flair facing Funk and Muda in the Halloween Havoc October 28th in Philadelphia. All I can say is Flair has fire in his eyes and tremendous fire in his heart as well. Terry Funk, I've been doing this a long time, buddy. The word... What? And that's when it gets cut off. <laughs> it got Come cut off on. right there. So we don't have the full copy. I blame you for this. Is. Oh, yeah. okay. Of course you do. Yeah, of course. Okay. So you heard it there. Solely claims Funk paid the $100,000 fine. A lot of money. So when I quit, match has been signed uh, for Sunday night, October the 8th at the Omni. But in addition to that, there will be a Halloween Havoc match with Flair, Sting, Funk, and Muda. Unfortunately, the copy we show, like I said, doesn't have the Flair portion of the promo, which sucks. But anyway, Doc, thoughts on this? They're milking this. They're milking and the I'm hell o- out of it. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's cool. I like how to say Flair paid this fucking fine just so he can get his hands on him. That's a good twist. Yeah. Bruh. Mike paid my fine so I could get back into Oklahoma. No, oh, That's not no. true. I did not pay nothing. I suppose you had to give him a, a, a couple of cans of dip and, and a six-pack of Old Milwaukee. He's been keeping tabs with these people from what I heard. We're not letting that asshole back in here thinks his shit don't stink because he graduated from high school. <laughs> oh, no. Don't, t- <laughs> don't talk like that. You'll get banned. Oklahoma <laughs> Boxing and Wrestling Commission says you can't come back. Yeah. You come back in here, boy, we're going to whoop your ass. I sent we might the, even I sent shoot the, you. Hey, look. I made sure that, that the pandemic hit Oklahoma super hard. How about that? That's nice. <laughs> Doc. Thoughts on the promo? Stop getting off track. Uh, I'm 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 not done watching these four guys or anything going on with this. So we're gonna watch it, and I'm glad to see it. What else do you want me to say? Shit. No, I just said I don't. I don't want anything. I think you're right. Um, they've transitioned well to the feud with Flair and Funk, and it's been done well, and it continues to be done well, and 
while we complain about some of the things in 89 NWA and on Saturday night, this is not one of them. This is definitely not one of them. Praise Harper, any thoughts? Stop. Harper, any thoughts? On this match? No, 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 the promo, and then I'm going to go to the match. I mean, it's, yeah, it's great. <laughs> so we go to the next match it is dick murdoch who's going to defeat dan spivey by dq that is and Cornette and jr they're talking about halloween havoc and they mentioned the cage match at halloween havoc which will be called the thunderdome and that bruno will be the referee for the match that cage match more on that as we go through the next few weeks teddy long and sid vicious are on the outside and they end up getting involved and murdoch is going to win by dq after uh after he gets power bombed um, Doc, thoughts on Murdoch and Spivey? No, first of all, this is the NWA, so why do I give one single solitary shit if Bruno's going to be the special referee? Well, they're in Philly, you know. I don't give a shit. Well, oh, who have I heard talk about this? And it's not Cornette. Um, was it Jim? It is going to be... Philip. Uh, no, Ross? no. It may have been Jr. To uh, Minch talked about it, but it, yeah, there's something to you know, you got Bruno, Flair, and Funk all in the ring together. Um, even though Bruno's just a referee, but I don't know. Um, is this the one where uh Andre's there and, and he's all crippled up? He's no, no, I mean, uh-uh. he shows up at, at a, one of these pay per views and he's well, just waiting. Pay per views for him to show up at, and he's all crippled. This is when he's just really bad off. He can't even walk anymore. He's on, he's on crutches. Nah, not Halloween Havoc '89. Okay, because because I, I think I Bruno shows that. up on that as well. Yeah, I don't remember that. I just, I remember the 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 cage match. But I don't remember Andre showing up. But okay, so. Doc, any thoughts or keep moving? Did you see Spivey couldn't get his stupid chaps off at the beginning of the match? <laughs> you don't like Spivey, do you? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Remember when he came into the varsity club and he's cutting those stupid promos? God, <laughs> yeah. Look at, yeah. Can, you give me 18, can you give me 18 minutes and 30 seconds, please? Uh, 18, 27. There you go. You just hit the end of it. The drop kick? Yeah, damn Murdoch could hit a damn drop kick here. Tackle, not even a tackle. <laughs> Standing drop kick from Dick Murdoch in 1989. Dick Murdoch. Oh, Dickie will eat you alive. But anyway, he gets jumped at the end, and Dick Murdoch's going to win. Okay, eh. any, other, any other thoughts, Doc? Eh. Just eh? Eh. Okay. All right, well... After that, we're going to go to Pillman. Let's see what he's got to say in a promo. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll have tag team action featuring the dynamic dudes in just a moment. But right now with Fly and Brian. Brian, what's on your mind? Your winning streak still intact? What's happening in the life of Fly and Brian? Well, first of all, Jim, I'd like to congratulate yourself on a fine job of putting Mr. Luger in his place. I think yourself, along with me, and I think the rest of the country has pretty much had their fill of Lex self aggrandizing sermon that he feels to bestow upon us each and every week. Now, I think another thing you mentioned was there's a lot of fine young athletes here in the NWA that would relish the opportunity to compete for a major championship. I feel I fall into that category. And I know sometimes in life, when opportunity presents itself, you got to reach out and seize it. And right now, Lex, I'd like to accept your challenge. I would like to be the first to throw my name into the ring to challenge you for your heavyweight championship belt. All right, so the challenge has been extended by Lex Luger. It has been humbly accepted by Fly and Brian for the United States Heavyweight Championship. We'll see if Mr. Luger makes any reply to your to your acceptance, fans. Let's go now up to Rhubarb Jones. I'll say it again. Uh, there's nothing spectacular there, but he's got charisma. There's something there. It's 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 in his eyes. Can you, you go believe, back a little bit though? You believe that he's going to win. I mean, you believe that he's a, a definite. Good competitor for Luger. How far Look how stupid go back? that hair looks. Oh, fuck. Not back then, man. I yeah, know. I mean, back then, he was... Pff, dude, he was winking at kids in cribs oh. with that hair. Dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, Jared's like, what's on your mind? Well, JR, crushing ass is on my mind. 
Now, I, well, before dude, I tell you, I guarantee I'm... you, bro, back then, he could walk into any mall in, in America and have these women fucking stopping dead in their tracks to fucking check him out. And he'd Agreed. be looking and going, oh, you got a one-year-old, a two-year-old? Oh, yeah. Mm. I can do some plowing and winking, baby. I'm the manager at at, at the record bar, baby. <laughs> do you think he, okay. anybody, well, in 1987 or 86, do you think somebody would have talked to him about a baby face using the term self-aggrandizing and say, baby, baby, come here, baby. Nobody know what that means. I don't know, but I got a question for Harper. Uh oh. What kind of car does Pillman drive? Oh, this is easy. Oh, see, it's uh, let's. What year is this? Eighty nine. September eighty nine. CX. There you go. What's it? The better question is. The better question is what tape is in the tape deck? Oh, let's see. Eighty nine, probably. <sighs> Something heavy, but not too heavy. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, he probably might... like, like the soundtrack, the fucking Young Guns or some shit. Interesting. <clears throat> I was thinking Guns N' Roses might be a little bit too heavy. Right. What kind of beer? Yeah, I want to say Van Halen, but it's just it, we've said that so many times. Yeah, yeah. you got to bring out some something that's not Van Halen. Right. Bang Tango. Danger, danger. All right. Well, any other thoughts on Pillman, Doc, or Harper? He, yeah, you were about to ask what beer he's drinking. He's drinking Miller Lite. It's yeah, less something. Something. yeah tastes, it tastes great. You seen that commercial lately where the guy picks up the Ultra and he's checking out, and the guy goes, you know Miller Lite's only got one less calorie or one more calorie. Is that true? Yeah. I wouldn't know. Yeah, Miller Lite is, it, it, it's, yeah, it, it, it has like one less calorie, it, and it's, uh, well, one I more think calorie. The carbs, right. And the carbs are somewhere mm. around the same, too. Mm. <laughs> the, dude go, the dude goes and puts the ultra up and grabs the Miller. I don't know, mm. They're taking the kid's shirt off. Come on. Come on, man. I Herbs. can't with this. So the dynamic dudes who remember Cornette's like their advisor now, Corny's out there with them. I got nothing. Uh, they're going to defeat Tommy Angel and Rick Ryder. The dudes win, and my God, they are just. Uh, I want awful. shorts like that 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 fucking rip off. <laughs> because I'm watching this, I said, "What are you wearing? Like those fucking TNC surf design fucking shorts?" And how, how they're going to pull them off like like fucking Jimmy Garvin when he used to pull his pants off like a little kid. I, I, I get ready to take a bath, and then it's like. No, they just pull them right off. I was like, fuck, I need some shorts like that. I'll be pulling those off all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, you got any follow-ups? Wrong team one. <laughs> the wrong team one. The dynamic dudes are a waste of time. This, the, the dynamic dudes are exactly what happens when you put a corporation in front of wrestling. This is what just, happens. Just, just wait till we. And get I'm going to tell that. you right now, it may not be as time capsule ludicrous as the dudes are, but when I watch modern wrestling, I have the same feeling about the jabronis I'm watching for the most part and the creative that they've been handed as I feel watching the dudes here, because that's what happens in a corporate wrestling environment. I actually think this is worse than some of modern wrestling. I know, because you you don't like to tell the people the truth. But my other question is, who owns the U.S. tag titles? They're 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 held up. They're they're still like they're gonna have a tournament eventually, but nobody's yeah. got them right now. Can't we somebody win them that. in some fictitious tournament in some weird town and show back up with them? Yeah, you could, but it isn't happening. Don't they bring back the three man title titles as well? I don't know about that. I always forget about the six man. I but think I know the that they birds get them, don't they? I don't remember, but I know them U.S. titles are going to show up shortly. I forget who wins the next tournament, but they will show up. What about the uh, what? What was the uh, brass knuckles trophy you had, Mike? 
You know what? You're just an asshole. Okay. Uh, Did you have to carry the trophy around with you? No, I had some lackey do that for me. What'd you win? Can you imagine how far down on a food chain you must be to (laughs) be considered Menace's lackey? Oh, wow. (laughs) The Dynamic Um, Dudes win. I pulled up the sixth man. Okay. Yeah. So Tenru and the Road Warriors are the champions, were the champions, but they vacated it in 89. Right. And it it will be um it will be vacant until 1998 where Derek Jesus. Domino, Lupus and Harley Lewis win Okay, it. so so it was still vacant in 98 then is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a. The, that's what I thought. I was like, I didn't remember, but yeah, then in Ten Ru and Row Warriors had it, and that was that was it. Mm. I tell you what, though, and what was that? That was eighty. That was late, earlier this year, late eighty eight. Late eighty eight. Okay, I tell you what, though, I remember when we first started doing the Saturday nights in eighty five and eighty six, and we were talking about the six mans at one point, and we all were like, "God damn, those things stayed around that long," and yeah. I you did. If you'd have told me they stayed around till eighty eight when we first started, I was like, I don't remember that, but yeah, evidently they did. So let's keep going. We're gonna go now to Robin Green. She's got something she's gotta say and reveal something to us. Here it is. By now, Steiners, you obviously have figured out I'm not who I said I was. My name is not Robin Green, and I'm definitely not from Milwaukee. You know, 90 minutes of Beave and Wally and Super Supreme, surely you just. I am woman. I'm not a valet. I'm not a manager. What I will be is the woman who will conquer the wrestling world. Not since Cleopatra ruled her Nile Kingdom has there been such a woman to conquer the world. I will rule the wrestling world. You know, there's an old saying, behind every successful man, there's a woman. This woman stands behind no man. The reasons why I chose the Steiners first was because Rick had no weaknesses in the ring, but his heart was another matter, which I showed you that. The men I chose to beat you to a pulp, Scott, are devious, sinister, and most of all, they're bad boys. I like bad boys. So, I'll say it again. I am woman. That's it. I am going to conquer the wrestling world. I will do what I want, when I want to do it, at any given time. It doesn't matter. I am woman. That's the bottom line. That's it. I'm sorry. I'm coming. I'm on my way. Beware. Doc, your thoughts? 30 seconds too long. She should have wrapped it up. Good promo. Um... Anybody else get excited when she says she's coming? No, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, every girl that ever looked like that, when she said, I like bad boys, every girl that ever looked like that always did. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I actually didn't think the promo was all that great. Um, yeah. She was, kinda, she, was, she, she was like discombobulated a little and she was just pausing a lot and it was like she was unsure. But let me tell you something. When you're as beautiful as her, you can get away with that. <laughs> Anybody else get a sad when she said she liked bad boys? Dude, she is smoking. She, she, she's a smoke show. I mean, it, it's... Smooth up in ya. That is no real. She looks like she's dancing behind them while they're playing in the video, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, Chris Benoit, I hope you're rotting in hell right now. God. Come on. Well, I don't think Mike has any say in that. And I think it's probably already happening. 
She she's bad. She's bad. Now I did like when she said, you know, she used the Steiner. So Dude, gonna Smooth Up Easy came out in eighty eight, so Yeah. That's terrible. It I like that when she says, you know, they say behind every good man there's a woman. There's a woman, but I, I stand behind no man. I believe her. Because that that sounds like something like some Instagram whore would share on <laughs> fucking Instagram. Where you just like, you know, shut up, bitch. But when she He's says right. it, I fucking believe her. He's right. <laughs> That's a good point. I tell you what, we're going to get to it when they reveal her team. They put her with the right team, too, in my opinion. I like who they put her with. Leave it at that. Is it, All right, the, Doc. Is it the dudes? All right, Doc. Any other thoughts on let's go? Let's go hear what the Midnights have to say. Yeah, let's hear from the Midnights. Back here in World Championship Wrestling next week, we're going to be able to see the Midnight Express in live action right here in the squared circle. A lot of teams are vying for the World Tag Team Championship, including the Dynamic Dudes, who we just saw moments ago, but the Midnight Express got to be right up there with them. That's exactly right, and the Fabulous Freebirds, they are so upset. They are so scared at the thought that the Midnight Express is going to come and get the championship that on October 28th at Halloween Havoc, I tried to have the match signed for the Midnight Express to face the Freebirds for the World Tag Team Championship. You know what Freebirds said? They said, we've already given the Midnight Express a couple of title matches on TV. This is the biggest event of the fall. We know the Midnight's going to be geared up. We are not going to defend the titles against them at Halloween Havoc. But I didn't have enough leverage to force the NWA to give the Midnight the title match, but I did have enough leverage to force the NWA to give the Dynamic Dudes the title match. So they're going to be wrestling the Freebirds for the World Tag title at Halloween Havoc. And the Midnight Express are going to be teaming up with our good friend Dr. Death in a six-man tag against the Samoans. They say there's going to be three Samoans. Well, I don't care if there's three, 30, or 300, brother, with Dr. Death on our side and with these men geared up like they are now. We're going to take those Samoans and send them back to Gilligan's Island. And the Dynamic Dudes, you know, the Freebirds may be saying... Who are these guys? Well, Freebird, the dudes know who you are, and if you underestimate them, they're liable to just walk out with those belts. It's going to be a great night for all of my team. Thanks a lot, guys. By a matter of fact, Sam, Sam, just a second. I know you guys have been uh, around the dudes. What are, what are your all's opinion of the dynamic dudes? Well, I guess he doesn't have an opinion, or at least one he didn't want to talk about. Fans, let's go up to Rhubarb Jones. Well, Stan's uh, lack of words actually said it all right there. The Freebirds versus the Dudes. Dear God, I'm looking forward to doing that pay-per-view. Um, yeah, that's going to be fun. Doc, any thoughts here on uh, what Corny Stan said? Stan Lane, once again, scoring without having plays run for him. Yeah. Scoring without the ball. I can't wait till we get heel Cornette back. No kidding. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, Stan, Stan was out there the whole time going, "Well, what happened to the studio? Where's all the Where's all the women?" <laughs> this he's feud, like, he, go he's ahead. like, "What happened to Shivani?" He's like, "Where the fuck's Crockett at?" <laughs> the The feud with with them, the dudes and Midnight, isn't good. But they're like I said last week and the week before, the stuff they're gonna do with. Johnny Ace and Stan is 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 kind of good stuff, but yeah, we'll say no more. All right, Doc, what else you got from it? Nothing. The mark dudes. that mark that down as the first time you sense the Midnight isn't. They're not pleased with the dudes right here or corny partnership. Is? Yeah, I'm just saying. Mark that down as uh, your first you know spot where you see Stan go. Huh, I ain't got nothing to say. Anyway. Uh, we go to the next match. We got Brian Pillman versus Cruel Connection one. I feel like I haven't seen, we haven't seen Cruel Connection in a few weeks. Doc, thoughts? The Doc will grab Brought a beer. Up. No, oh, I'm you, here. Okay, there you go ahead. You, you, you were silent for a second. When is the last time you watched a current product match work an arm? I haven't been watching much current product. You know, maybe they don't work a a fucking body part that's that that's too old right no. 
Work a body I was part? Watching, they don't I was do watching that no more. Flying Brian work an arm, and it made sense to me. I don't know. You can't flip and work an arm at the same time. That's the problem. That's a, good, <laughs> that's a great point. <laughs> you sure can't. You sure can't. Yeah, I think Carver just summed it all up. I, I, I try not to, like, base my opinions on modern wrestling off of just what I see on Twitter clips, but yeah, I, because you know, it's not fair. You're seeing like, you know, 20 second clip and these shows are obviously much longer than that, but man, there's been some stuff shared in the last few weeks where where not only is it flips and dives, but it's bad flips and dives from certain wrestling company. And, and I can't stand the bad acting. Oh, the, I can't. It's like, in what? I just, you're not an actor, so stop trying to act. Yeah. They don't know it anymore, Harper. And I, I you know, Harper, don't it, you don't see. Go ahead. I mean, what are you going to try to do? Fucking sing and dance next? I mean, it's just, well, it's not well, they did that. <laughs> they did, they did that on AEW a couple months ago. <laughs> Cornette, Cornette almost had a heart attack and died uh, from it. Uh, on his show and and i don't always agree with corny but i agree that shit was dumb um you know it's just it's all they do flip and dive just and shoot with a fucking Netflix. promo just just just, just 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 shoot a fucking promo but here's the thing bro you don't understand this you can't be legitimately mad at somebody in a corporation and these I, guys are corporate employees but, but just put the mic in his hand and say you know i will yeah, when I get my hands on you next week, yada, yada, that's it. That's not how it 30, works. Mike, you, Mike, can you cut a promo on anyone in a corporation? No, you just bite your tongue all day long. But the the, the part, the, it just goes back to that discussion we've had for years now since we started covering 85 or Smoky Mountain. Whoa. As we see Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, Halloween Havoc, Plug 89. It goes back to that old thing, Doc, we've always said. You know what? We love wrestling, but God damn, we probably fell in love with the shit talking first. Can you run back to Pillman's finisher? I thought you were about to say something about Look, Elvira. A dive. Go ahead. There's a dive for the finish, and it was 100% safe. And it was one dive. Yep. And it was the it was finisher. The that ended the match. Yes. Yeah, I missed him. But yeah. Yeah. That's a transition move now. If that it's not even a transmission transition move, they're doing it before they hit the collar and elbow. Yep. I mean, that's a headlock takeover now. Look at that. And then, yeah, so we go now after Pillman beats is that, next who, one. Is that giant Gonzalez? <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck's that asshole? Is that it giant might, Gonzalez? It looked mm. like him. Um, I think we all loved us some Elvira back then. Well, Jeez. I jerked off to her so many times, dude. <laughs> Come on, really. I mean, fuck, nice. I mean, what do you want me to say? <laughs> Remember when she used to, guys, she used to do those, I think it was Coors Light one year. She was like the, you know, the Coors Light Halloween cans or whatever the fuck. And, and I was like, God damn, man. Come here, girl. I mean, did were you taping, like, you know, the, were you taping them and, and no, you hit pause? I mean, I just, or how, how no. were you? Did you crank it off during a commercial? I'm, I'm, I'm confused I mean, look here. look at her. So, I mean, but it would, so it only took you 20 seconds? Exactly. Like, you know. Wow. So you just, you just, bam. Go, go, just go, 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 go. I think, I think that is Giant Gonzalez because it says here on his Wikipedia page that Ted Turner offered him a wrestling contract in 89. Yeah, he. He, I think he debuts in in ninety, like beginning of ninety. So yeah, that, that would make sense. Combat. Yeah. Yep. Him and RoboCop. Oh, yeah. don't remind me. Ugh. Remember that shitty movie she did. No. No. Yeah. Yeah, she did like a an Elvira movie. Oh my that, god. That totally bombed in the late, like at about this time. Eighty nine. Okay. I'm yeah, looking I at. I remember that. I'm looking at camp camp. Blah, blah. Capital Combats matches. I need to quit the show before we do this. Jesus. I mean, you complaining about 89 at times, but 90, it gets rough about two, three months in. 
I just want to see Ron Simmons win the fucking title. That's all Ron. I want to say. We got a little ways to go before we get to that. Oh, fuck. Don't die yet. Okay. So why does that guy turn the moon the camera with his pants on? I don't know. Which, Let's keep going. The guy that over. Yeah, the guy bending over in the middle of the screen. Let's keep going. Uh, this is the last promo. We got the Steiner brothers, and let's see what they have to say. Fans, welcome back to the Super Station of World Championship Wrestling. The Steiner brothers in tag team action in a moment. But right now, let's hear their comments, their thoughts about what happened to Scott from Woman. You know, I got stitches in my face. I got a fractured cheekbone. I got cracked ribs. I can't see out of my eye. And I got goosebumps the size of silver dollars in the back of my head. But I know... It was three guys, and Robin Green, I knew you were no good from the start. I should have listened to you, Scotty. I hear my brother, I should have listened to you. That, I could, you couldn't have had anything from me. If you had me right here, I would have did anything for you. But no, you got to go, and you got to take the deuce out of my brother. Why didn't you come and get me? You could have got me. Why didn't you? No, you got to do him. Go the easy way out. It ain't going to work. You know, I don't care what you guys did to my face, because I've never won a beauty contest in my life. What you did to me was deep down inside because I've never let down the Steiner name and I've never let down my brother. So boys, show your face. Let us know who you are because revenge will be ours. Revenge. Nobody does it worse than us. Brutality. Nobody does it better than us. And remember, nobody knows how to hurt another human being in so many different ways than the Steiner brothers. You should have killed him. You should have killed him. Why didn't you? You should have killed him. It ain't gonna hurt. Look at this. You think this is gonna stop us? This ain't nothing. We're gonna come in. We're gonna draw blood. You think this is stopping us? No way. No way he's gonna stop me. No way he's gonna stop him. Come on. You know, I've made fun of uh, makeup jobs on wrestlers before. But that that wasn't too bad. The way they made Scott's eye look swollen shut. Yeah, that shit looked good, man. Yeah, real dude. good. Yes, look that at was like Joe Hollywood Cruz. Makeup. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Look at Joe Cruz's hair back there. Okay, let let's go back to Scotty though. That that's a hell of a makeup job. Yeah, I mean, look at that, dude. He had to walk around every day with that shit on his face, huh? I would guess. I mean that that that's a that's a Hollywood makeup job, man. Yeah. Um, it looks like uh, like fucking Rocky. Rocky. Yeah, I thought the same thing. It looks like Rocky. One of the Rocky movies. Cut, I, I, cut the the reason I the, cut me Mick, cut me Mick. The reason I the reason I thought it looked so great is, dude. There's an angle. I mean, Doc Doc probably remembers it from World Class where Iceman got a fireball thrown in his face, and and like two weeks later he's on TV. And it's the worst makeup job known to man. They put like red makeup on his face to make it look like a burn mark, and it just it you can tell. And then he wrestles a match, and it wears off. And then cuts a promo <laughs> after, and you can see it. You can see that it's worn off in the promo afterwards. So that's why I point that out at how you know this is this is fabulous. I mean, they really did a great makeup job on Scott. It looks it looks really really good. Uh, so credit them. You know, when we 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 call it like it is. We say when things don't look good, well, this looks exceptional. So. Yeah, I thought this was great. Doc, what would you think? This was really good. I like I like Rick being able to shoot shouting off Mike. Does Rick have a plug of chaw in his mouth? I don't think he does. It, it does okay. look like it. It does. If you look at his lip, Hopper. Oh, his bottom lip. yeah, I see it now. Yeah, he's. I think he does now that you say that. Cutting a promo with. Yeah, he just moved it with his tongue. Yeah, that's talent, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the thing I don't like, I mean, it's something very, very minor. It's, it's fucking nitpicking. Is they're not wearing Letterman jackets. If you look at it, at the sleeves, it's like some... I mean, look at... Oh, yeah. You can definitely tell with fucking Rick. It's like a... I don't know. It almost looks like cloth and not the... Yeah. The, the regular... Yeah. You can tell it's like a knockoff, the one Rick has on us. Scott's Scott's actually looks better than Rick's. Yeah. I, I see exactly what you mean. I also don't like the blue background, the green screen. I, I 
I hate yeah. that, but that's a nitpick. Yeah. At least they at least ha- had the, the fucking logo behind them. NWA yeah. or WCW or something. This is some WWF bull crap. They that's I really feel yep. like that's what they were doing. Um yep. and Gordon Soley was in front of that same stupid screen. But you know, hey, the video version is about to end. We're gonna rank this thing and or rate it in a little bit, give out the Rolex. So look at that hair. To that. Dude, Bob Cook is a like a he's a fucking tow truck driver. Yeah, but look at that hair behind him. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that, that main Jesus, <laughs> yeah, look at that. That's probably what Diamond Dallas's pages hair looked like when he was running a bar in New Jersey. God, I'm gonna, five. I'm gonna pause it. Look at holy <laughs> shit! How does that asshole walk around looking like that? Dude, even for back then, that looks horrible. Yeah. Dude, it was like when what's his? It was like, well, who's the dude that came on the set in TBS that time at, at, at the studio? Was it David Allen Coe with the Yo, with the yeah. hair and all percent? He's got a fucking cape on his head. Yeah, but it, what, it's what not David that Allen, bad. What was David Allen Coe's uh, most popular song, Harper? Oh, uh, which uh, which the the album where he went dark, where he said some things. Oh, when he said like a bunch of like dirty, dirty shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like what? Oh God, it was a. He's distracted. On a pillow. Missy just came out. He's distracted. Run it back. Susie, Susie, shallow throat. I I think this has fallen uh, short, Doc. Whatever you're trying to get Hopper to recall here. So he talked about it a few years ago, and, and he sang "Fucker in the Butt, Fucker in the Butt, Fucker in the Butt, Fucker in the Butt, Fucker in the Butt." I like to fuck the shit out of you. You you realize at this point we've recorded like 800 plus episodes, and uh, this is my favorite one. If I could see Missy again, Jesus. Yeah. Um. So let's go. After the, after the Steiners, we got the Steiner brothers with Missy Hyatt. They're going to defeat Joe Cruz and Bob Cook. Missy walks to the ring, and she doesn't look happy, to be honest with you. She seems... She was right. She's been right all along. Yep. Uh, Missy is right. You know, she's... Nothing's worse than a bitch who was right. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't mean to, to come across... Look at look at her face. She's, 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 she's I ain't looking not... at her face, son. Okay. Well, she's uh, beautiful, huh? well, my point was she, she's really playing it well. You can tell she is not a happy camper. Sure. Anyway, all right. Doc, thoughts on this match? Watch the leapfrog. Well, I was going to say uh, Scott takes out his frustration. Yeah. On these staff with some. Why. Stiff's clotheslines. Watch. Uh, but we'll watch it. Does it happen in the beginning? I don't remember. I think it does. He's stiff. Well, Doc, while we're waiting on it, uh, yeah, yeah, what well, do you... you watch this. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> now he's Whoops. like, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> you're dead. I'll fix this. <laughs> I'll fix this. <laughs> delivers a couple you know what that's like, like that's like when mom's yelling at the kids and dad's sitting in the chair but when dad's had a fucking enough and blows the blows the just the top off the place and then everybody even mom's looking at dad like oh shit yeah boy that happened in my house before recording tonight uh happened over here too by the way yeah <laughs> Pandemic, pal. It happens on a daily fucking basis. Yep. Like, I got a long. Damn it, I got shut a, the fuck up. I got a long wick until I don't, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, man this guy be out there. If he's got all these problems with a fractured face and ribs and stuff, should he be out there? I was worried about that makeup coming off. Maybe it's hard That's... way. That's some good Hollywood makeup, dude, because it ain't moving. I mean, his eye is still shut. Dude, Maybe it looks hard. great. It Maybe almost looks real. Play. Maybe it's hard play. I don't think so. It almost looks real. You can kind of tell it's not, but it almost looks real, in my opinion. But he's about to beat the piss out of these saps, and they're going to win. 
Any other thoughts, Doc? This is how we go off of here. No, they were super impressive here, and I can't wait to see what they've got in store. They're getting ready to go on a pretty epic run. The tag team division is very strong. Uh, oh, yeah. That, yeah. In, in in this promotion, and it's going to remain strong for some time. And you're right, epic run. But that's what I it's hate, what's... bro. Like I saw on Facebook, someone on one of those 80s pages, it said, on this day in 1987, uh, the Hart Foundation beat beat the Bulldogs for the tag team title. And I'm thinking, I mean, what if the tag team titles changed on fucking Raw next week? Isn't that, you think anyone's going to give a fuck? Uh, no. You know, 30 plus years ago? <laughs> you, you know, from now? Ugh. I don't know, Harper. I was thinking, you know, it's funny you brought that up. I was thinking about that the other day. I think, although a smaller audience, I think there are kids now that are growing up watching that, and they will look at that the same way we looked at the stuff in the mid 80s. I doubt it, dude. No, 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 no. My kid. No, no, no. My kid can tell you he's amped. I mean, lit up ready for the Rumble this weekend. The Rumble's his favorite match. And he can tell you who won the last eight to ten rumbles. That's cool. See? He's eight That's years what I'm old. Saying. He, he ain't got shit else to remember. It sure ain't his schoolwork because I see it every day. <laughs> um, and I tell him, I'm like, you can tell me the 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 thirty guys from last year's rumble in order, but you can't tell me what three plus three is. Come on, it's just something about being that age. You remember that kind of shit. Like yeah, I can yeah, remember, and, I can remember every Super Bowl winner from the '80s, but yeah, I had I to think too. about, I had to think about who the Chiefs beat last year. I was like, <laughs> I know the Chiefs won, but who the fuck did they beat? Isn't that crazy? How I was telling someone about that they they beat the 49ers, and fuck, dude, the 49ers just fucking disappeared off the map. Well, yeah, a lot of injuries too, though. I mean, be fair. They lost everyone this year. I mean, they had like yeah. twenty to so, thirty people so on IR. The point is, but, do they do they do it right? No. Do kids remember shit at this age if they want to? Yes. Yeah, my thing was, are, do they do it like they did it when we were kids? No. The audience also, in my opinion, is is you know substantially smaller. It's much smaller. But there are kids who are watching that shit right now. That will, 30 years from now, go, man, remember when such and such won the, the title? And like, the they'll, rem- those, they'll remember it. They'll, they'll have that hate, memory. We hate those theme songs. My kid's got every one that's ever been written in the last 15 years on his iPad. And he, my, my daughter can't stand wrestling. But she can sing word for word the Tyson Kid theme song. Oh, God. See? See? <laughs> She couldn't take Tyson me. Kid out of a lineup, but she can say That sing. doesn't shock me. Huh? No, I was just saying that doesn't shock me. I mean, I've I've experienced that too. So these kids can remember what they want to remember, and a lot of them are going to want to remember wrestling stuff. The point I make is that the WWE makes our kids jump through hurdles that wrestling didn't make us jump through. Yeah, it was presented 10 times better for us. Damn right. Let's go out and yell at some clouds, man. Fuck it. <laughs> all right. Let's so, rate this puppy. Yeah, let's rate it. Rolex it, all that stuff. Before we do it, I want to remind you, please use our Amazon Associates link. It's tinyurl.com slash BTT Amazon. It's a great way to support this show without spending anything extra. Use that link. The show gets some support in return from Amazon. Again, it's tinyurl.com slash B T T Amazon. All right, Doc. Uh, what do you want to do? You want to rate it or Rolex first? What do you What do you want to do? I'll leave it. I'll let you choose. Me? Sure. You pick one. Whatever one you want to do first. I'm gonna rate it. It was 40 minutes. Uh oh, where'd he go? I say. You cut out. You cut out, Doc. Repeat. Oh, 40 minutes. Good pro. Mm-hmm. Good show. They cut off Rick. Yeah. So, B+. Plus. All right, I mean, that wasn't 
they didn't cut them off. The copy we have cut them off. I didn't get to see it, and I don't like it. All right. Uh, I'm going to give it an A. I, I thought I, I was more than good with it. Good show. Good stuff. Enjoyed it. Harper, what are you gonna what are you gonna rate it? It gets an A. I mean, forty minutes. Yeah, man. I mean, come on, man. It could have been yeah. forty minutes of a man molesting a horse, and Harper would have given it an A. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, who are you giving your Rolex to, Doc? I'm going with Luger, man. I thought that was a great promo he cut. I gotta say, I'm going Luger too. Great promo, Harper. I think mine a woman for her boobs. Of Can't course. argue with that. <laughs> See? Uh, of course. All right. So that is almost going to wrap things up. Before we get out of here, I do want to remind you, if you are not a patron, consider becoming one at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. It's not only a great way to support the show, but you get a ton of extra shows in return. You get the video versions that you always hear me talk about. You get all of the clashes we've done. You get the pay-per-views that we've done. We've got Halloween Havoc coming up. There's another clash this year. So tons of extra stuff available on the Patreon feed at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. The World Class shows are there, etc. So consider signing up and support the show because remember, we don't have ads. We're not trying to sell you gold dip dongs or gold dip with uh, flowers and all the things that you won't use in life. We're not trying to sell you. Nobody's selling you dong croutons. You know, here we are. Three guys love old school classic wrestling. So support the show because we don't waste your time with 20 minutes worth of ads each and every episode. Like many shows do these days. And that's not a shot at them. Good for them. Yeah, They're it is. Yeah, making it is. money. Um, but on. we don't do that. Okay, we don't do that here. We have no ads, so become a patron. Tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. And, you know, Stephen Javorski likes to make fun. He says I'm begging, but he's one of the biggest patrons we have. So there you go. You know, he's he, he likes to be a troll. He's the, he's the worst troll known to man, but he is a patron. Tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. Way to, way to Stick treat that the up customers, your customers, Mike. Stick that up your pipe and smoke it, Javorski. Um, yeah. Go go crank off to Hopper's voice as you're listening to this. Mm. Okay. <laughs> it's the only uh, uh, podcast that's fucking black owned and, and uh, black operated. So <laughs> you got that too. That's it's nice, Hopper. It's, it's uh, Bobo. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, Doc, anything before we get out of here? I do need to mention one other thing, but you got anything? Uh-oh. Is this where we, we fire Harper? Oh, no. God. I'm no. getting furloughed again? Yeah. No, you're not getting furloughed. Well, let me do the shout-outs. <laughs> he's, uh, he's trying to move us in more of a Robert Silva direction. No, but Silva did tell you Lex and 89 would be fantastic, and you're done nothing but eat your words. You didn't believe him, so there's that. Uh, Shout-out to our Vantage Point, the Retro Wrestling Podcast with Joe Murata and Michael Quinn. Northern version of BTT, slightly classier, definitely more professional, but still fun nonetheless. They support us. Please support them. Check them out. And then check out Mike Prue and JV on the Bottom Line cast, the career of Stone Cold Steve Austin. A couple weeks ago, they hit the 100th episode, so congrats to Mike and JV. They also do... Our ECW show on our Patreon feed at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. Okay, Hopper, you got anything before we get out of here? No. All right, hit the tagline and let's go home. Book it. <laughs>